Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? We're gonna do a video. This is a Sunday. We've got uh, the dog in the car over there. Um, about cutting logs. It's different now than it used to be for me. Um, used to be cut logs for to merchandise, like uh, for sale. And now I'm cutting logs for a mill, which typically you do a little differently. But let's go through the pile here real quick. This is all firewood now. This mill cuts a lot of blocking, and you could get a blocking log out of this. But with the prices of some stuff right now being down, sometimes it's just as easy to leave this that extra four foot. They can't. I'm going to cut an eight. I'm going to have like a six footer left. So there's no sense in wasting it. I'll just throw it in the firewood pile, and that one, of course, is cracked. Uh, you could probably squeeze an eight footer out of that. There's not too much sweep in that, but for lack of better words, this is just the firewood pile. We get over here, this is blocking. Anything that's dead, real lumpy, bumpy. This one ain't, eh, there's some knots on the other side. That's a, an upper that comes out. When I say uppers, that comes out of like the top of an oak tree or like the top of a tree. You've got a couple limbs that are gonna pull off this, but see how bumpy some of these are. That one's got some sweep and it's a little bumpy. That's a nice clean log, but it's a dead log. And over here is what we call the money logs, but they're not really high money because it's all oak and oak's way down. I don't know prices, so I couldn't tell you. I just know it's down. But uh, black oak, that's red oak. Uh, black oak, that's a nice clean one there. Uh, we've got some uglier soft maple. There's a good white oak that has a heck of a check in it for what reason, I don't know why it did that stress that one's got a little bit of ring shake or wind shake double heart still basically these are all your butts as long as they're pretty clean i'll explain further once i get the loader warmed up the decisions i'm making and why i'm making them so what i will say is this mill likes anything from eight to 12 foot they really don't like anything over 12 foot the they really prefer nines and tens nines being because it's a tie log they could still trim it down and get blocking out of the outside side lumber or whatever and um the 12s obviously because that works for 348 inch sections it's great for pallets so let me get this thing warm because it's cold and i'll get back with you all right i don't know if you can hear me or not I'm gonna turn down the radio so I don't get copyrighted. But here we go. So, first thing to remember, it's what the mill wants. It's not always what's what you think will be best out of the log, it's what the mill wants out of the log. And they love 10 footers. I don't know what their markets are for things like in the 10 foot range. Um, the only thing I can suppose is, yes, is that uh, 10 foot log, you pull lots of nice side lumber and you still give yourself the option for that tie log. You know, the tie out of the center. Plus there's 10 foot ties, throw in ties too. Now, this one here, you can see it down there. I could stretch 12 out of that, but there's so much taper in that log from there to there, they're losing too much in between. It, it makes it a little bit harder on the, the uh, head the Sawyer down the head breaker. So we're going to knock it down to 10. That's a fairly clean log. Now there could be defect. You're not necessarily, when you're cutting for a mill like this, you're not necessarily cutting for grade. Want to try to keep grade in mind, but you're cutting for yield. I'm gonna move you up. You're bouncing around too much back there. How's that? Yeah, you're cutting for yield. You want them to get the most bang for their buck out of their material that they bought standing. Now here, 
nice straight, very little taper, no sweep. We're going to stretch that out to a 12. That'll give us 12 foot stock. Plus they can cut that can, you know, where the pit is in the center of the wall. They can cut that out for um, a, like a big pallet can or something. Right there, right by the saw, there's a little knot, like it's hidden, it's been grown over. A lot of mineral on this foot, on this side of the, the hill. I forget. That's north, that's north facing slope. It's got, I don't know, for some reason, the top of it. Now look, we can go 10 here. I go 10 because I got a knot on the top. All the defect seems to be on one side, maybe two, so that's still a two sided log that pull lots of grade out of that. Plus blocking. I'm going a little slower than I normally do so I can explain things. And this might make no sense to anybody. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to me. But it's what they want, it's what you do. I'm not impartial either way. It's not like I'm sawing the lumber up for my things. Now here, the rest of this tree is very bumpy, very lumpy. Be a prime candidate for some tie logs. There's a little bit of sweep in that, so I'm not going to stretch it to a 12. Maybe you know what? I think we will. We'll stretch it to a 12. The reason I do that, you see this piece left over? I didn't have enough to get three ties out of that, or even three eight-footers. So we're going to cut. That's a little one. It's right around 12. Very close. Very close. Within six inches. So that might be 12 dead on. And this is 12 foot five. Is the mark on there? So there's two pallet logs there. You know that one? Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll get to 12. That'd be all right. All right. Grab this white oak. Drop that one there. Get this one out of the way for a minute. Tack this one up. Alright. That's a nice log. Very clean, but you see all the taper in the butt. See the butt swell? So I'm not gonna go past 10 foot on that. That could even be near possibly. Very positive. I don't know if it will. I don't know if they're pulling white oak veneer. I know the price of white oak did drop. Just word on the street. So will this veneer... See that log? See the taper in it now? Is this end clean? Could veneer. There's a little dark spot in the center. I don't know what that's all about. Depends on how frisky the buyer is. Order of what I would put in the grade pile was that one I just moved. Now, if this is straight, depending on what's left, I might pull a 12. Good and straight, we're going to pop a 12 off this. I mean, ideally for trucks, you'd want all 12 footers. That's how you get the most footage on a self loaded log truck. Or, you know, all 12s and some 16s on top. If they don't want any 16s and they do not want any 14s, you know, if you have to. If you end up with one, they'll take them if they do not like them. It's just not there. They're not set up for it, I guess. All lumber's not your thing. So what do we got here? See that knot right there? We're going to try... Can we get 10? Yes, we can. We can get 10. Just barely. Support that so we don't check it or split it. Yeah, look at that. Nice, clean 10-footer. It's got a couple sucker limbs on it, but those ain't going to harm nothing. We'll get plenty of good lumber out of that. Now, what do we got here? So we've got, see that knot? Let's stretch it out and see where 12 takes us. We're going to go straight to 12, and this will go right into the blocking pile, because I'll have double heart up there. We've 
got some knots in the, the log itself. I'm gonna set this so the butt hangs out the back. I'll come trim that off later with the chainsaw. Now, what do we got here? This is two firewood poles. A little trick I'll try to do. I'll try to lay this down. Instead of having that cut off down there, I'll try to split that. Because all them short cutoffs are big and rough when you gotta clean up. See how that just broke? If you do it right, you can do that. Now since the firewood pile is far, I'll pinch or index, as they call it. I call it pinches. We can cut an eight footer out of that, but I'm only gonna get one. We're gonna waste about six feet, like I explained. Now maybe four feet. Yeah, six feet. Right, right the fire with power. Okay. What do we got here? What do we got? Who's next? Next big Seal it up nice and gentle. I need to beat on stuff. Down. That log looks to be about 21 feet. So I'm going to stretch this first one to 10. There is some sweep. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go with 9. There's too much sweep to leave that. See that sweep right under the, the lower jaw there? Log's got a kink in it. See it now? So I was going to do 10 and 10, but I might do 9 and 12. I think that's what we're going to do. This 12's a little bumpy, but I think it'll still be alright. Yep. Yep. Looks 
like the rest of that would be firewood. And that one way of doing this kind of bumpy. See this one that rolled over, I didn't see that on the bottom. We're gonna put that, yeah, we're gonna put that in the blocking pile. Now they'll still pull great lumber at the block. It's two different mills. They'll still pull great lumber off of there. But um, we just try to separate it any we can. So see, why would I do I could, It's got the diameter, but see that big knot there? There's a big knot there. We're just going to, rather than gnaw all over that, we're just going to throw that right into the firewood pile. That'll make nice heat for somebody. Make a nice load. So, all right. I'll do a little follow-up here as soon as I'm done. I'll explain a few more things, and that'll be it. Okay, so here's the quick follow-up. Um, obviously, you know what blocking logs are. They like lengths 9 foot and 12 foot. 8s and 10s as you have them. You try not to do it. That's for this mill. Now, but for um, that's for the blocking mill. Uh, there's same mill owns two different mills. Does that make sense? They own a couple, actually. But uh, the two that I'm... One is primarily blocking and the other one is primarily great. So if a little bit slips into either one, doesn't matter. But I try to cut my eights, nines, and tens. There's a nine. You know, obviously plenty of face lumber on that. Um, and then it'll break down into a tie. And then this here we cut as a nine because it could go as a stave if they choose it to or even a veneer log. Very possible, but I doubt it that that one will. And then these ones up here, those are scarlet oak. They're a little bit bumpy, but they still got some nice volume and straight. That's a 10, that's a 12. Um, face lumber. And then the cant in the center could be sent for pallet grade. This is a little small. Uh, it was clean, a little bit of sweep in it. I was able to stretch it to a 10 because of what was left in the tree, so I stretched it. If they cut it off, they cut it off. It's kind of their choice. But... Um, you could really take this down and start like talking about the types of different lumber, like the one common, uh, FAS, two common, things like that that come out of the log. But once you start getting into that, it's like a whole, oh, you know what I mean? It's, I would maybe look at it like that if it was the mill, like my, like if I was sawing the lumber, but um, the volume these guys push through, you can have a little bit of error. I mean, let's face it. So, there's a decent pile. We've got firewood. We've got blocking stuff and grade stuff. Two loads of grade. Almost two loads of blocking. Very close. And definitely a load of firewood. So, Fred came to work with me. What do you say, Fred? What do you say? He says, this work stuff sucks. Let's go home. All right, guys. We'll see you.